everyone, welcome to season two of the Vox Talks. And these talks are all designed for our current students and they are given by alumni of Hot House and Emma Jo. And we're trying to inspire the next generation of young musicians to go on and be superstar components of whatever career they choose. And today's guest is one of our absolute very best musicians we've ever had come through. I'm delighted to welcome to the call the wonderful Mr. Andy Bunting. Wow. Are you doing your own? <laughs> this is very cool. And thanks, Andy, for coming and doing this. This is really exciting. I know we've got lots to talk about and we're going to go through some crazy things. Whereabouts are you dialing in from at the moment? Uh, I'm in Birmingham at the moment. Oh, so that's where you went to college, is that right? Yeah, we went to the Birmingham Conservatoire. Ah, very good. Now this one, maybe a bit of a shout out for Ollie Fitz and John Hilliam, because they've, they've just been offered places down uh, at the Birmingham Conservatoire for next year's jazz course. So um, congratulations to those. And we're going to get into a little bit about that um, later on in the chat. If it's all right with you, Andy, would you mind telling the people watching, you know, what you do, who you are, and maybe your journey to this space today? So uh, I'm predominantly a piano player. Um, but I also do a lot of composing, arranging, recording, producing, that kind of thing. Um, and I started getting into music. There was always instruments lying around the house. My, um, my dad used to play quite a lot of instruments. And um, I just sort of picked, picked things up and had a go on them and sort of played by ear a lot. Um, and then got to a standard and then met... John Eno, met yourself, John. <laughs> Thanks. And, um, and went, it was called Emmy Joe back then, back in, the, um, back in Victorian times. And um, and then just loved playing with other people. So playing in a in a big band, uh, it was a social thing. I got, I got to make new friends and then play music and get better at it. And then that took me to a college in Nottingham. Yeah. Uh, where I studied jazz piano and uh, learned about other things like pubs and <laughs> things like that. Um, but also, uh, yeah, that got me into the Birmingham Conservatoire and uh, met loads of new friends there as well um, and sort of settled in Birmingham and now do loads of loads of different things and it's very cool mate and when you say that you're just a you know you you're predominantly a piano player i mean on a level of piano players you are at the very top of piano players in the whole world i mean i don't want people to uh, underestimate how good you oh, are at this stop it. <laughs> i'm going to get you to play a little bit in a short while but um you know, I know you do the producing and I know that you do the, uh, you know, the arranging and composing thing. And is that something that you wanted to do right from the very beginning? Because I think you went to Little Over Community School in Derby a long time ago um, yeah. with your bro, Tom, and also uh, guys like John Sims, who are, you know, really nice guys. Did you always like the creating part of it? Yeah. That's, um, and I've always, I've always written music and written songs and arrangements. Um, and I think it's almost a necessity for a musician, especially nowadays when, um, I don't know, performance opportunities are, they're, they're there, but um, really you've got to make your own opportunities in, in music. So um, it's a great way of getting, getting people like meeting new musicians and get if you if you've created a project you can get them to come and um, play your music and then you get other work from that and it's almost a necessity yeah. but it's a good job i love it so <laughs> I th I some people who, who just have never experienced music don't realise how intrinsic it is into our lives. You know, it's every single nuance is part of what we do. I mean, I'm thinking about your Tom's a you know pro bass player. Your bro Sam was like a ridiculously good trombonist. Your mum and dad are, are like passionate music advocates and great musicians themselves. And it kind of runs in the family. Would you say you know like that helped you when you were doing your you know in your formative years? Oh, definitely. And having encouragement. It's like anything. If you play sport um, and you get encouraged or you have a, I don't know, you have people around you that are pushing you to, to get better, it's a good thing. Which is why joining um, sort of groups and bands and playing, playing music with other people is so important because you all work at it together and you all sort of develop so much better and so much quicker. 
And it's amazing skills, though, aren't they? I mean, that's part of the benefit of doing music is that you learn to get on with people. And, you know, actually, I remember when you were a little bit younger and you were at Little Over in your secondary school, you weren't the traditional type of musician or the music student. You know, when we're thinking like kids who've been learning the clarinet from when they were five, they'd go for a lesson every week. You were more... You were an organic, natural musician where you were playing around with instruments at home, but you weren't necessarily having formal weekly lessons for a long part of your, um, you know, your education. Is that true? Yeah, and I think because I, I was quite experimental, I sort of thought that I, I knew what I was doing. Um, so maybe, maybe it was a bit of like, I'd rather be experimenting on my own ideas than go into lessons. And then you learn very quickly when you uh, sort of go up the, the ladder of music education, as it were, when you get to uni and things like that, that there's no time. You, you've got to listen to everyone and, and, and you, you develop loads more because yeah. you're, you're getting ideas from everything else. But yeah, at that stage, I was very much a sort of, wow, this is a piano. I want to... Yeah, I don't want to listen to anyone else. I just want to explore it. Yeah, man, I, I totally agree, and I think it's wicked because we have lots of kids now across the country. Some want to do lessons, some don't want to do lessons. But the 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 big takeaway for me is that it doesn't matter. You know, there's no yes, you have to do this or no, you do that. You can find your own way through to where you're happy now. And like I know when you went to Birmingham, that you had some great input from some super teachers there. Who were the guys that would have um, you know switched on your mind there? Uh, we had um, Liam Noble and uh, Hans Collar, Out Mike way. Williams, sax player, uh, was great for sort of harmony things and yeah, lovely. And you kind of listen to all of them, don't you? And it's like they've all got something to say and you can take away what you want to take away with it, but it's good to get into that kind of listening mindset. The, um, when I was thinking about the kids that are about going off to Birmingham this time around next year, they, I was asked, talking to them about, you know, why do they want to do this? What were the moments that made them want to do this? And, you know, the bass player was definitely when he saw Tom, your bro, playing. You know, he really is like, I just want to do what Tom does. So he wants to go to Birmingham because Tom went to Birmingham. Was there a particular moment for yourself where you thought, I just want to do this? You know, there was a light bulb moment. Um, I think uh, in, in, in Emmy Joe, seeing people like Josh Blackmore, go and um, uh, go and study and then you go you, you see um, while I was still at school I went down and visited people that had gone to uni you see the life and you see the um, the gigs and all the music that people are playing and it just inspires you and makes you want to do yeah. more I feel yeah. that way inclined yeah you know I totally agree and like for me when I was young, I, you know, it was seeing the Count Basie Orchestra with Frank Foster at Ronnie Scott's. Um, you know, it was one of those moments which just like, yeah, I want to do this life. I want to be in a club. I want to be uh, playing till three o'clock in the morning. That's what I want to do. And I remember when we were with, um, when you were in band, we went on a tour. Do you remember where we went to? Was it LA? Oh, we went to LA, yeah. Uh, the IAG. That's it. The first ever intercontinental tour that we did. And we ended up playing for Gordon Goodwin. And, yeah, and Gordon came back in, uh, back into the rehearsal room afterwards, and was like super complimentary about your piano playing on a song called Amber Spirit. Do you remember yeah. that? I remember, I remember the tune, and I, yeah, I remember it. It was great. Oh, it, um, it, it rained really hard when we were out there as well, and <laughs> like flooding everywhere. Torrential, utterly yeah. torrential. But I mean, there were some great guys, and I, we saw Shelley Man. We saw some really great musicians, and I'm sure. You know, if you get inspired by seeing things in, in real life, it's one of those things that you should do. Travel. You know, I, I love the travel part of what we do. Um, so, you know, thinking back to things that you might have learned on your journey, things that the musicians today might like to listen to, um, what sort of credo and life lessons have you picked up which you think would be worth young kids trying or, you know, absorbing? Um, I think... Be, be adaptable don't um, don't try and put all your eggs in one basket um, and especially the way things are going musically and in a professional sense um, like suddenly there's gigs and then suddenly there's no gigs because of lockdowns yeah. and things like that so um, uh, so then 
everything moves online and by a microphone, by like be able to record your music online um, on a computer, that kind of thing. But just be um, be really adaptable and uh, think about what your music is for as well. Yeah. Like, is it is it just for you, or can it involve other? Other, are you involved in the community in what you're doing? Are you involved in your family? Are you involved, involved in your friends? And often, if you let people into your music, you'll get so much more out of it. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. Part of this season's Vox Talks, we've had Louis Dowdwell talking, and one of the things he was saying was basically, you know, he does playing, he does tradesman work, and he does clinician work, and he does music producing, and he does mixing, and, you know, it's more... You know, he's very aware of why he's doing something. So like your target audience, you know, it's nowadays, I think jazz musicians are becoming a bit broader. It's not so narrow. It tended to be for a while that, you know, you'd go and do hardcore straight ahead jazz and you try and make a living as a small group musician. But nowadays you have to be able to do everything. So, I mean, some of the things you've done in Birmingham, like the gospel projects were huge. Um, do you feel like sharing a bit about that? Yeah, that's, um, that's a, a drummer called Ray Prince who, uh, He's, he's a session musician um, and he's played with people like Beyonce and stuff like that. Um, so it's great to get to know him. But he set up this Gospel Revisited project and we've done things with um, the Birmingham Uni uh, Philharmonic Orchestra and uh, yeah, incredible gigs. And it's always, it's always a full house. And because it's um, just really uplifting gospel music, it's just the greatest experience. Yeah. Um, to go and play, especially when you're playing with an orchestra and there's like, I don't know, 30, 50, 30 to 50 musicians on stage and um, everyone's sharing it um, at the same time. It's just like a buzz, isn't it? I mean, I don't know how to describe it to someone. I, I guess if you play in a football team or a cricket team or in a netball team, if you do really well and everybody's gelling, it's, there's a real buzz there and a real sort of connection. Um, I, I remember when you gave a session to our Jazz Academy last year, you were talking about um, body and soul and you brought in some of that gospel um, language that you were talking to them about, you know, moving up with the bass. And it was just so powerful and moving of what, you know, the, the, what you've learned over the time and how it's made you a more interesting tapestry of a character. So um, I don't suppose you feel like turning your keyboard on and playing just a little bit of body and soul. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, maybe just, you know, the first day section or something, but give the listeners at home an idea. Um, so when you were talking about the gospel stuff, you were trying to bring elevate the one and make sure that everybody was you know, aware of where the one was and that, you know, chord one in the sequence. Um, is that about right? Have I remembered that correctly? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> knowing where we are and then being free with it. So knowing where, <laughs> always knowing where, um, where the time is, where the beats are, but then... Because that's sort of inbuilt, you, you're then free to go wherever you want. Yeah. And also uh, manipulate it and take it away from that if you, if you so wish. Yeah, man. I mean, I think it's amazing. And like to think where you started back, apart from, you know, all of the things that you've done, were there particular moments which have influenced what you want to do on the piano now? You know, were there things that you think, you know, you know, was it Alex Wilson or was it, you know, Danilo Perez? Was it who, you know, were there people there that you think, you know, he blew my mind? You know, I, mean, I could think, obviously we think Oscar Peterson and people, but, you know, there's loads of guys out there who are great players. Yeah, um, I mean, Alex Wilson, yeah. Uh, there's so many there's so many yeah. that you, you listen to and then you try and get things from and uh, I mean listening to Jackie Bio with the Mingus yeah. um, uh, project for me is was a really life changing the, just the humour in it and but also the uh, amazing playing um, but yeah and then trying to listen to loads uh, listening to gospel music listening to hip hop listening yeah. to trying to get things from all different types of music not just sort of the jazz greats that we yeah that we I completely the, agree uh, do you feel like just playing as the a little bit of body and soul for yeah. the listeners at home <laughs> Thank you. 
Absolutely love it. I just think you're the best piano player. I love. I think it's fabulous what you managed to do. Um, what you know, you said just before you played that that um, you loved the fun that was in the Mingus project. I mean, I think that's something that perhaps we lose as musicians. Get you know, they're trying really hard to learn things. You know, would you say that humour is one of those things that we need to try and remember more for the younger musicians? Yeah, and and with it's almost. Everyone gets because with music education, because you're learning things, and you're uh, and by that I mean just having lessons and then and then studying and practicing. Um, you, it's so easy to get to to get embedded in what's right and what's wrong. And actually, there's no right and there's no wrong because um, whatever you play, we forget the basic elements of of music. The tension and release and the elements of surprise the happy the sad all this all these sort of really simple things whereas actually if you just you can make amazing music dropping your instrument on the floor like at, at the right time it's it's not a yeah. i don't know loads of yeah, I don't really know where I'm going with that. But, um... uh, I do get what you mean because, you know, I think the whole thing about learning music and uh, what we tried to do very hard with um, our kids in our bands is we try and have the humour element, not because we just want them to be fun and enjoying it when they're doing the music, but, you know, we want them to sit in a car when they're going to a gig and get on with each other. We want them, you know, when they're shopping in Tesco's, not to be getting angry and aggressive. We want them to see the funny side of life. You know, we're, we're trying to bring up well-rounded people and... I think humour uh, is key to tolerance, and you know I, I'm sure that in your career you've you've worked with a whole sort, of, a whole gamut of people and characters, and some are easy, some are difficult, and some are just great. But you tend to gravitate. I'm saying I, well, I gravitate to the people that I want to be with, the people that I want to, you know, be like. I don't know if it's similar with you in your in your world, really. Yeah, definitely. And you want to you want to have fun when you play music. You want to, and also if you watch your music, you want to see the people on stage having a great time and, and enjoying themselves and and having fun. So um, if you don't really want to go and see people being stressed, unless you're a particularly horrible kind of person. So uh, uh, so yeah, it's it's important that you and you and practice having fun, like as well, like. It doesn't, sometimes it doesn't come easy, especially when you're learning so many different things. Practicing, sort of not worrying about things and just playing and just having fun and enjoying it is a really good thing to do as well. Yeah, man, a great advice, really sage. You know, I wish somebody had told me that when I was young. In fact, one of the kids has sent a message in saying, um, if you could go back in time and give your 14, 15 year old self a bit of advice, um, what would you what would you say to yourself you know when you were 14 15 can you remember what you were like um i think i i don't know I'd, i can't really remember those times very very well but i'd probably say uh practice more and but don't worry too much about what other people think yeah cuz um yeah it's easy to get bogged down with I don't know, thinking you're, are you better than someone else or are, are they better than you? But it, at the end of the day, none of it's a competition mm. and it should be about making people happy through music. Yeah, collaboration over competition every single time with music and the great, the great moments happen when people work together. I totally agree with that. What about the future though for um, you down in Birmingham? Have you got plans? Obviously when COVID and all that um, comes under control next year, anything big? Uh, um... I'm writing a, few, uh, a sort of album with cool. and just sort of co collaborative uh, projects uh, with loads of people, sort of across the world. There's people yeah. in California and nice. all all over the all over the place. And it's sort of been a, a sort of well, lockdown happened, and I thought, right, what do I do now? There's no gigs. There's no. Um, let's try and use that to sort of reach out to people that I wouldn't wouldn't normally um, collaborate with and try and make some music. So at the moment I'm working on that. Um, cool. I run a I run an orchestra called Reworkestra, and we do we did a Stevie Wonder gig last year, and so hopefully if um, if the venues are still around, we might be able to do that again. Um, I've, the Gospel Readers to projects of we did a session for them the other week, 
Um, so they're going to have some things being released soon. Um, I've done a folk a folk project with a, a band called Sons, Son of John. Yeah. Um, yeah. And loads of other session work. And I think continue, continuing those things, because it's been really fun. I, I love people and playing music with people, but I also quite like sitting in my bedroom creating things. So um, it's, yeah. It's, uh, I think it's cool, man. I think it's really good. Oh, and, you know, if if you want, if kids wanted to get in touch, or they uh, can they follow you on SoundCloud or Instagram or anything like that? Do you have yeah, any sort of platform? Instagram and I'm on Twitter, but I don't use it very much. But really, Instagram is the one I uh, um, I mainly use. Right, brilliant stuff. Well, I'll make sure that we share that out along with this. Um, this video as well which will be very cool and obviously hopefully that some of the guys who might end up down in Bergamo uh, will be able to say hi to you when they see you uh, rocking around Symphony Hall which would be really very cool yeah definitely and so, just, if, if anyone needs any help with anything just give me a give me a shout I'm do, always uh, do you know what that's the best thing the thing that I've learned about all of these talks is that whenever I talk to somebody and the last guy who said it to me was a guy called Joe Hoblin he said you know I was really surprised when the kid asked me what I what they thought. I was really excited because I just wanted to tell the kid what I'd learned all the time. And I think it's so true. I don't know many musicians that won't share the time to inspire the next generation. Does that make sense? And I, you know, you've always been great with our kids and so um I'm hoping 2021 will be a seminal year for uh, for both yourself and for our young musicians. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Well, well, thanks very much for tuning in today, folks. This has been uh, the Vox Talk with the amazing and sensational Andy Bunting. And please do search for him online, Andy Bunting Piano. He's from Birmingham. He's absolutely world class, one of the greatest guys I've ever met and an amazing piano player and producer. And uh, we look forward to you joining us for another se session soon. Ciao, everyone. Bye.